What's going on in Saudi Arabia? Well, basically, uh, the answer is all of the above when it comes to is this about consolidating power? Is this about fighting corruption? Look, when you do business in Saudi Arabia, it's all about who you know. There's 15,000 princes in Saudi Arabia. And so what the crown prince is doing, Mohammed bin Salman, is basically saying all real decisions need to come through me. At the same time, he's ambitious. He wants to reform the economy to modernize it. And he doesn't want to have to deal with resistance. The problem is, what happens if he fails? Then you could see a regression in Saudi Arabia that leaves it far worse than where it is right now. They are trying to take Aramco public. That is the oil company of Saudi Arabia. We've had guests on who've said they think that's going to be impossible, that the balance sheet of the country and the company are completely intertwined and the vested interests are so hard to overcome that they're never going to list in a real place like London or New York, um, but places with weaker listing standards. Is this part of that? Is he trying to achieve something real for Saudi Aramco? Can, can we put those two things together? Well, I think he may be, but here's the thing. When you look at Saudi Arabia, it's much easier to find out who's, who's socializing with who, who's going to what party. The deepest, darkest secret in Saudi Arabia is actually involved with the oil reserves, how much each field has. And so I'm not sure whether you're going to have Aramco actually listed in a way that would make it responsible with the transparency that would be expected of every other company. That said, um, what the prince is trying to do is not simply bolster oil. Ultimately, that's what got Saudi Arabia in this problem in the first place, but to diversify. The former oil minister of Saudi Arabia, um, Yamani, famously said, look, the stone age didn't end for a lack of stones. The oil age isn't going to end for a lack of oil. What Saudi Arabia is trying to do is build up its agriculture, build up its tech, build up its chemical industry. Then why industry. would they put the biggest investor in Saudi Arabia? Al Walid is not an oil guy. He's low on the well, totem pole in the Saudi royal family. He's known for technology and financial investing. If you put him in jail, what are you, or the, the Ritz Carlton, you put him in detainment, what are you saying to potential outside investors about the safety and stability of a non-oil Saudi Arabia? Well, this can cut both ways, actually. On one hand, Look, it's selective justice. Everyone in Saudi Arabia is just as corrupt, although it depends on how you define corruption. You don't have the whole conflict of interest uh, regulations and laws like we do in the United States. What's being said by Mohammed bin Salman is no more dealing with all these other princely power centers. You have to come to me. The question is whether that works or not. If it does work, if people know whose door to knock on, that gives a little bit more certainty, but you're absolutely right. It doesn't signal a 21st century modern economy. He's made a lot of enemies by doing what he's doing, right? Well, absolutely, and this is the danger. I mean, you look at what's going on with Yemen, and Yemen has become a huge financial drain on Saudi Arabia at a time when Saudi Arabia can't afford it because the price of oil has declined. And so the question is whether he's just trying to shut up dissent at a time when he's gone so far out on the limb that, that Saudi Arabia is about to plunge he's, over. I'm he's mixing edged, my metaphors. He's edged, out, but, he's edged out a couple of other uh, crown princes to get where he is. Does he have, uh, I can't imagine he has their support, but does he have the support of the security forces, the National Guard? Well, this is what we're going to see. I mean, certainly I don't think he would make this move if he didn't have the support. And against the backdrop to this is, of course, all the rumors that the Saudi king, his father, is actually ailing, uh, has a bit of senility. And so this might be why these moves are being made now rather than later. What would backlash mean uh, in the long term, Michael? Would that mean his agenda gets, just gets thrown away? Does it mean that the Aramco IPO is in jeopardy? And what does that mean exactly? Well, you look at everything which Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, is trying to do in terms of liberalizing the economy, in terms of bringing women into the workforce by allowing them to drive and so forth, uh, in terms of oriented much more towards the West. And if you have the backlash, if Mohammed bin Salman falls like so many other crown princes have fallen, then ultimately you're going to plunge into a much more sectarian Saudi Arabia that wants to fund extremism, that might be much more hard line against the West, much more distrustful of the West, much less a willing partner. That's the danger. Any, any reason to be suspicious about this helicopter crash? Mm -hmm. Well, ultimately, the fact that it occurred so close to Yemen 
brings a great deal of suspicion. And the backdrop to all this, of course, as we enter the Saudi perfect sandstorm, so to speak, is that you had a ballistic missile that was intercepted over the Saudi capital. That suggests that the Yemen war and the accusations of Iranian involvement are becoming much more serious. If Houthis were responsible for downing this helicopter instead of just mechanical failure, that's a big deal. It went down in Asir, which is the province right next to Yemen. We've been showing Secretary of State Rex Tillerson a video of him meeting with the Crown Prince. What do you think the U.S. administration is thinking about all this? Well, ultimately, the United States just wants to see the Crown Prince succeed, but there's always a danger in, in consolidating policy into one single individual, because when that individual is gone, then chaos can reign supreme. We're at a very dangerous time in Saudi Arabia right now. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.